The ability to reproduce is one of the main properties of life. Bacteria and other single-celled organisms reproduce simply by copying their genetic material, then splitting in half. The benefit of this method is that these organisms do not need to find a mate. The downside, however, is that each offspring has the same genetic makeup as the parent. While asexual reproduction has its benefits, the transfer of genetic material that occurs during sexual reproduction allows for genetic variation in offspring. The genetic variation achieved with sexual reproduction allows the potential for some offspring to have an increased chance to survive their environment. Sexual reproduction involves the combination of genetic material from two parents. This happens through the production and transmission of sperm and egg cells, or gametes. A gamete is the sex cell of a sexually reproducing organism with a haploid set of chromosomes. Gametes are produced from cells called germ cells, specialized cells that are activated when animals reach reproductive age. Spermatogenesis is the formation of sperm cells and it takes place in the testes, whereas oogenesis is the formation of egg cells and it takes place in the ovaries. Let's take a closer look at each of these processes. Sperm formation begins with a spermatogonium, which is the diploid cell that is the origin cell in spermatogenesis. Sperm production involves several steps. Step one, the spermatogonium divides by mitosis, producing two diploid primary spermatocytes. Step two, the primary spermatocytes then divide by meiosis one, reducing the chromosome number to form two haploid secondary spermatocytes. Step three, the secondary spermatocytes then divide by meiosis two into spermatids, which are immature sperm cells. These stay connected to each other via cytoplasmic bridges, areas that connect the cells via the cytoplasm to coordinate development of the spermatids. Many genes required for sperm maturation are coded on the X chromosome, but not all sperm have an X chromosome. Some of them will have a Y chromosome. By staying connected via the cytoplasm, the new spermatocytes are able to share the necessary genetic information. Step four, when fully developed, haploid male sex cells, the mature spermatozoa, separate. Sperm production results in four individual sperm cells being produced from each precursor germ cell. It begins when the organism reaches reproductive age and continues throughout the male's lifespan. Each ejaculation can contain 20 million sperm cells. By producing far more sperm than are needed, the male is increasing his chances of fertilizing the female egg cell. The formation of an oocyte, the female haploid sex cell, begins with oogonia, which are the diploid cells that will further divide to form the egg cells. This process is complete before birth, so female organisms are born with all the oogonia they will ever have. For this reason, the formation of oogonia is not considered part of oogenesis proper, but it's vital to the process of forming oocytes. The formation of oocytes involves the following steps. Step one, the first true step of oogenesis is oocytogenesis, the process by which oocytes develop, which happens after female is born. During oocytogenesis, the oogonia undergo mitosis to form the primary oocytes, which are diploid. It is thought that oocytogenesis is complete shortly after birth, but this idea has recently been challenged and is under investigation by researchers. Step two, ootidogenesis is the part of meiosis that produces the secondary oocyte from the primary oocyte. In this step, the primary oocyte undergoes meiosis, splitting its genetic material between two daughter cells. However, this process is halted in prophase one. The oocytes remain in this stage until triggered to continue during the female's fertile period. During each fertile cycle, only some cells move forward in the process and are available for fertilization. In humans, it's just one or two cells, but in some species, such as seahorses, hundreds of eggs may be available for fertilization during a single cycle. Step three, the oocyte continues through the end of meiosis one, forming one viable cell, the secondary oocyte, and a polar body, a smaller non-viable cell with no genetic material. 
This secondary oocyte is halted at metaphase 2 of meiosis 2 until fertilization occurs. Step 4. Upon fertilization, the cell completes meiosis 2, producing an oatid, or a fertilized egg cell, and another polar body. So unlike males who carry out gametogenesis continuously and are fertile throughout life, human females produce gametes in cycles. And after about 500 cycles, they stop producing gametes and are no longer fertile.